Perfect. Well, sorry, we actually kind of did the introduction for anybody who's watching later. We did the introduction. So Kelly, plant-based kitchenista, we are going to do tofu Buddha bowls with a peanut sauce, but actually it's going to be an almond butter sauce and then roasted miso cauliflower. And then Jerry kind of introduced himself, but we won't do that again. So welcome. All right. So we're going to get started. So we're going to get the tofu started first, you know, just regular extra firm tofu, whatever's your favorite. You know, there's all kinds out there. You can get them in the little boxes that have a lot of the water around them. Or you can go like if you've got a Trader Joe's or someplace like that, you can also um, get the ones that are in the little packs. And sometimes those, if you really like firm tofu, if you get the little packs at Trader Joe's are really good. And they don't have a lot of water or anything like that. So you don't have to do much draining or patting down or any of those kind of things. But they're, but it's a really nice, like chewy type of a tofu. So we're just going to chop it up and then we're going to get it going. So about one inch squares, because if you do a little bit smaller and stuff, they tend to fall apart. And it's kind of nice to have a little bit chunks and stuff when you're doing a Buddha bowl. So you just kind of measure it out, kind of eyeball it. And then usually what I do is I'll just separate it, stack it like that. Put the stacks together. And then since I want one inch, I'm going to just do it right in half the long way. Like that. Flip it. Stack it. They should match up. Then look at one inch again. Like that. There we go. All right, so now we're gonna make the sauce because we need to be able to put the tofu, actually I'll just do it in the bowl instead of using another bowl. So the sauce, so this was just 16 ounces of tofu, so just your regular container. I would say that if you really like tofu, like the Buddha bowls and you really wanna have something for the week and you've got different vegetables, I would probably do two packs of the tofu just so that you have that, you know, that great tofu and stuff and you can actually put it on some wraps if you want, all those kind of things. But usually if I bake it on a, a Sunday and stuff, I'll do two packs and then Jerry and I can eat it all week long, which I really like. All right, so we've got one, so we got one tablespoon low sodium soy sauce or tamari. This is just the, the, this is actually just a sodium or a soy sauce. And then we're going to do sriracha. So one tablespoon of sriracha. If you don't like heat, don't do sriracha. You could do, um, if you wanted to add just a little bit of flavor, you could actually take your sriracha and change it out for goji jang, which is just a, like a red roasted red pepper sauce, real popular. It's like one of Bobby Flay's. I was just actually watching some of Bobby Flay's um, cooking show. It's one of his favorite ingredients now. He loves using goju jang. Or if you don't want any heat, you could actually do like maybe like a hoisin sauce in here or just the low sodium um, soy sauce and kind of change it up that way too. You could always add a little sweetener too if you wanted to, just like some date paste. All right, so you've got that in there. So that was one tablespoon. So we got a little bit of black pepper. All right, and you don't have to do the black pepper or anything if you don't want to. So then I'm going to add the tofu in. And you could do this overnight. So if you wanted to, you could actually put the tofu in and let it, like you could put it into like a Ziploc bag or just leave it in a big bowl like this. And then you could just kind of just put some, you know, like plastic wrap on it and just shake it up. Kind of do that two or three times and then let it set overnight. And then your tofu just takes on more flavor, which is really good. So I'm gonna grab a big spoon. So you wanna do enough just to cover it, but you don't wanna to do too much of that manipulation of the tofu because your tofu will start to, even though it's extra firm, it'll start falling apart. So you just wanna make sure everything's covered. So kind of doing it at an angle like this and just kind of flipping it a little bit, we'll get everything covered. And then the trick of getting tofu, you know, it's great just like this. You could just put it, you know, right on a baking sheet. You'd be great and it'll come out great. Whoops, run away, get back in here. But if you want it really crispy, tapioca starch, corn starch, you know, non-GMO, all those is the best. So if I, yes, so if you want to, if, so yes, you'd want to double the liquid. So just do like, you would do like two tablespoons of soy sauce and two tablespoons of sriracha, or if you change it out to something else, for if you're going to do a double pack of tofu. So there we go, all mixed up. All right. Then you've got two tablespoons. I've got the non-GMO corn starch, but like I said, you could pretty much use tapioca, potato. There are just so many different corn starches that are out there now that work really well. So same thing, just kind of put your bowl at an angle. 
Just do a little mix. And the cornstarch or the tapioca starch, potato starch, whatever you're using, just gives it that extra crispiness, which is really nice. Okay. And it actually soaks up the sauce too, so it makes it even thicker. All right, so let me get a baking dish. Since I, one of them tried to run away, but we got them. Baking dish, just a baking pan, baking sheet pan. You've got parchment paper so you don't dirty things up. And all the sauce. spoon back and then you just want to spread it out the less they touch the better you're going to get for um, crispiness so I'm just going to separate them out a little bit and then you're going to put them in a so 390 400 degree oven if you wanted to, you know, cook it a little bit longer, you could put it into like a 350. But usually what I'll do is I'll put the heat a little bit higher. And then that way and stuff, it gets really crispy fast. So it's all ready to go. Big chunks of tofu. If you wanted to, the other things you could add, you could add some black sesame seeds, which I think I will. They're just always pretty. I don't know why I was putting them in my hand first. A little bit of white. There we go. All ready to go. Let go in the oven. Smells really good. So if I taste, just give you an idea. The sauce, it's got a little bit of kick because it's the sriracha's got in there. So if you like sriracha, you'll really like that sauce. If you're not good with hot, then I would say cut back on your on the sriracha. Like maybe just if you've got, I said a tablespoon of sriracha, maybe you put just maybe like a quarter teaspoon, and then you could always add a little bit of sweetness to it. But over otherwise and stuff, your to, your tofu is going to really soak that up anyway, and you're going to get a little bit on the outside, but a lot of your sriracha and like that heat and stuff is not going to stay once everything's all baked out. And then of course you get the you know get the almond butter sauce and things like that, which will make it really good. So I'm gonna flip over to the roasted miso cauliflower because I wanna get the cauliflower in the oven. So regular had a cauliflower. So bigger chunks. So kind of like when you're pulling, when you're pulling the little florets off and stuff, some of them, you know, when you get some, they're like the florets like this big, which is really too much. So I cut it down to a little bit bigger than bite-sized pieces. So some of them are a little bit smaller because they came just that way and stuff. And then others, I just, you know, kind of just halved them and just, you know, but just actually if it's, so it's like too big or something, I just took the knife. I did that and then I just finger. So that way it looks a little bit more natural and it doesn't have like all the cuts in it. So that is ready to go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the sauce first. So let me just put this off to the side, grab a bowl. So the sauce is gonna have miso, vegetable broth, grated ginger, which I'll get here in just a second and black pepper. So very simple sauce, but very good sauce. That's, that's a good one. All right, so we've got, so we're gonna go in, go ahead and put the miso. So this is just a regular, you know, you can get white miso, you can get actually a black miso. This one's just a kind of just a regular, um, it's like a brown rice miso, which was really nice. So it's whatever I have. Well, usually when I do a recipe like this, it's like whatever miso that I have in the fridge. So sometimes it's a little darker and sometimes it's a little lighter depending on what I bought or where I bought it a lot of times. So that was two tablespoons of miso four tablespoons of vegetable broth. Let's just say you get into the fridge or you get into your um, your cabinets, your pantry, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, I don't have any vegetable broth. Water works just as well. That, all right, so then we've got ginger. Let me grab the ginger, it's in the freezer. This is the way I do ginger. So I have ginger and I keep it in a, a a Ziploc bag that I put in the freezer. And then what I do is I just grab a piece out like this. Like that. Grab my grater. 
I don't have my microplane. I seem somehow misplaced it. I think it's in one of my cooking bags. So I'll have to go look for it over the weekend or a couple weekends. So it's going to be, so I'm going to actually do one teaspoon of freshly grated ginger. So a lot of times and stuff, what they'll tell you with ginger is that, that you want to, you know, you want to peel it down with a spoon, take all the skin off. But when you actually freeze it like this, it keeps it fresh. So you can have fresh ginger all the time. Cause there's always a lot of times and stuff I would buy ginger like this, a piece like this. And then I would get in the refrigerator like a week or two later, and it would be about this big. So this is the way to keep your ginger fresh and to have ginger around all the time. And you can see I have a lot of ginger. I think I bought it like organic for, I think it was like $3.99 for all of this. And so now I just have ginger all the time. So just go and you just start. Oops. Right side would be great. A little bit more. And it makes it too, when it's frozen, it makes it really easy to grate, which is really nice. So you once in a while will get just a little piece of the of the brown skin on it. And if you do and stuff, then, you know, just like right here, you can just take it and toss it to the side. Or if it gets into the, what you're making, you know, just pull it off to the side. But that's the easy way to, to do ginger and have fresh ginger all the time. So you don't have to use like ginger powder or anything like that. So this is ready, of course. Put it back in the bag, zip lock it up, and back in the freezer. Back in the freezer it goes. So in my freezer, I have basil all the time, so it's always frozen. I have basil, I have spinach, I have kale, I have ginger, lots of little different ingredients and stuff that I'll use. And like when I make like a tomato sauce, I can go in there and I can grab this big, you know, big mound of, of frozen basil, put it in there and it makes the best tomato sauces. So always recommend you got extras, freeze it, which is good. All right. So we got the ginger. So we got a little bit of black pepper. So simple sauce. This one's also, if you've got some sesame seeds, you could add some sesame seeds in, or when you get ready to roast it up, you could put some sesame seeds on top, or you could wait until everything's ready to go, and then you could put some sesame seeds right before you serve it. Sesame seeds, especially the black ones, just add so much. They're just like, it's beauty. I always call it eye candy. So just kind of give it a good stir. You're going to have to break down your miso a little bit. If it doesn't seem to break down, you can let it set for about, you know, two or three minutes. It kind of soaks up the liquid and then it'll start breaking down for you a little bit more, especially if it comes right out of the refrigerator. Sometimes it takes just a little bit. It's like peanut butter or like an almond butter. It takes just a little bit longer to break it down. It's the damn zoom man. Just kind of give it a quick... So taste-wise, of course, it's going to taste like miso. It's definitely not sweet. It's a, more of a kind of an earthy flavor with the miso and stuff, but really good. So it'll be a nice, you know, when you've got like the almond butter sauce or like a peanut sauce or something, it's the, the cauliflower inside of the Buddha bowl is going to give a really nice flavor to it. Okay. It's pretty much one little chunk mixed up. That off to the side. All right. So the cauliflower, we've got, I was going to grab, I thought I had a different bowl. Let me just grab one more bowl. Cauliflower florets. This is another one that once you taste it, I have a feeling that you'll probably make it like a double batch. So same thing, just, you know, just whatever ingredients you're using, just use, make the, the, uh, the wet ingredients a double batch. So there's still a little bit of miso in there. I'll just kind of get my hands in there. Since I'm at home and Jerry knows my hands, if I was in a cooking class, of course, I would I would uh, put gloves on. But just get in there and I mix because, I, like I said, I saw a little few little tiny chunks of miso. So just want to get in there and make sure I get them all. And I want to make sure that I cover really cover the cauliflower because cauliflower is just like tofu and stuff. It's going to pick up whatever flavor you put on it. So this one, if you want a little spicy, sriracha, goji jang, all those great flavors. Okay, wash my hands. 
nice. I can smell the ginger. It smells really good, really nice and fresh. All right. Same thing. Nice kind of a meal, because if you think about it, you've got two things that are going on baking sheets that are going right in the oven. So you're not, you know, standing over the stove and you're not microwaving. You're not doing all those crazy things. So just dump that on there like that. You also could keep the sauce if you wanted to. You could keep it off to the side and then you could actually just kind of baste it a little bit if you wanted to, because there is enough sauce and stuff that you could do that with. We're just going to mush it around a little bit and then we're going to bake it. Looks yummy. All right, there it is, all ready to go. All right, so if you're making a tofu Buddha bowl, because I told you I was going to ask you the question, what would be some of your favorite, if you could type them in the chat, what would be some of your favorite vegetables that you would put in your tofu Buddha bowl? Yeah, so I'm doing red cabbage, I'm doing radishes, I'm doing carrots, edamame, sprouts, and limes, avocado, and don't forget, avocado. Broccoli peas, yeah, broccoli peas would be great. So if, you, if you're thinking about, let me just take this off the screen, um, said so we're still recording, but um, if you think about like this, because it's, you know, we're making a tofu, so we're doing the, the, the rice is cooked and the tofu is cooked, but the vegetables that we're going to be putting with it are all raw. So you're kind of mixing raw and the cooked, which is really good, but you could do a big saute and steam up. So you could do like the broccoli or you could leave the broccoli, you know, completely raw again too. You could do cauliflower peas. You could do sugar snap peas, um, snow peas, all those type of things. What else would you put? Zucchini. Yeah. Zucchini is plentiful right now. which is a great way. You could do yellow squash. What are like some red ingredients you could put in? Corn. Love corn. Corn on anything is good. I'm from Kansas. Grew up on corn and mashed potatoes. So I love that. Peppers. Yeah. Peppers are really good. So you could actually do, you could just do like, you know, the raw um, red bell peppers, green, yellow, orange, whatever you want to do. But you could also buy those little sweet mini peppers and then you could roast those up. So you just, you know, put them right on a pan, roast them up. And then you could add those to it, which are really good. So, but when they're, cause when they're uh, um, roasted, those little sweet mini bells, wonderful. Um, you could actually do another fresh ingredient with like a cucumber. So you know, and there's, there's just so many things that are out there. You could do bok choy. So you could either do raw bok choy or you could actually saute it up. So there's so many things that you could add to it that, you know, it's just, it's just like a smorgasbord is, is what I would say. And, and then, you know, me doing the cauliflower also was really nice because then I can add, I can add a cooked ingredient. So this is a great mix of, and I know that if you watch Chef AJ and some, a lot of you guys do, she's been mixing a lot of cooked um, you know, plant-based and a lot of raw. So this is a great way to do it, you know, chop everything up and not have to heat up the entire house too, because you have everything ready. All right. So we're going to make the peanut sauce. Let's see what else we got. Peppers, corn. Yeah. I love all the, love all those. We're doing edamame, um, which is always a fun ingredient, but there's, like I said, there's so many things out there that I could think of that you could put on this that, you know, especially, and it's could be, you know, tofu Buddha bowls could be clean out your fridge day. So let's say it's a, a Sunday, you could make your rice, get everything ready, the tofu, and then just chop up everything you have. So you're thinking about, well, I want to go to the store later, replenish, replenish everything that I've got, all my vegetables. So, you know, chop up your carrots, chop up your, you know, celery, chop up your, I mean, just everything and anything that you could put on here. So it's kind of a wide open game. All right. So let me grab, since I use the other bowl, I want to make the peanut sauce. You could throw this in a blender if you want, um, but we're just, since we've got, you know, need some muscle power, going to go, you know, to the, go to the resort and all those kind of things. You don't want to have your arms in good shape, all that. Here we go. This is what we're going to do. All right. So we've got basically um, a quarter cup of almond butter. I think I'll use a spoon to get that out there versus getting it stuck in the whisk. There's a lot of really good almond butters out there. And then there's some that not so good. Um, you know, if you want to stay away from, you know, really get really healthy on the almond butters, you know, you could make your own. So you're just using them from the, the, fr you know, fresh almonds, or you can get into where it's, there's like the raw. So I bought a raw almond butter probably about a, a month ago. 
expensive um, in the stores and stuff at Sprouts. I think they were like, it was like $21 a jar or something like that on, I think it was on sale too, which is crazy. And the jar was only about this big. So, you know, used it sparingly um, type of thing on things, but you know, it's, it's a lot of people they'll say have like inflammatory reactions and stuff to like peanut butter. Um, so that's one of the things. So I thought, okay, well, let's just do almond butter just in case somebody's like, uh, I don't do peanut butter type thing. So I don't use a lot of like nut butters and stuff, but every once in a while to have like a, you know, a drizzle on a tofu Buddha bowl or something like a wrap or something like that. That's when I make these up like that. All right. So we've got the almond butter in there, quarter cup of water. If you wanted to break it down even faster and like you're doing it the day before, of course you could add a little bit of warm water. So that would break it down faster because of the almond butter in there. Then one to two teaspoons of, of uh, low sodium soy sauce or tamari, or coconut aminos, any of those that you want to use. Yeah, peanut butter. I've, I've tried it in the Vitamix. If you've got a great, like a blend tech or a Vitamix and stuff, making your own peanut butter and so that you don't have like all the oils that set in the stores and things, or if you use like almond butter, or you, have, you, you can even do like a walnut butter. I mean, it's just pretty much anything that's out there is really good. There is, you know, if you're like, I want to get a Vitamix, I don't have room in my fridge, or not my fridge, but my countertops, and I really want to do it, then there's so many, there's so many nut butters out there now. I know that the, um, oh, what I'm trying to think of her name. She was out there for so long. It'll come to me. But she's like, she was out there for a long time, and she's actually come out with her own line of nut butters. And there's a guy that's I always watch, and I can't think of what his name is, but he's in England somewhere, and he can be very... Um, He's, he's a lot more kind of raw, but, but plant-based, um, blonde, he's like blonde hair and everything, but he gets really like into nut butters. So like everybody sends him the nut butters that they, they make. And then he does like a, he does a, on his show and stuff. He's like, you know, give you a seven or give you a grade or nope, I don't like this one type of thing. But he's shown some nut butters of like mixes of things that people put together. I'm like, wow, never thought about it, but he's big into nut butters. Okay. So we'll. So same thing, your almond butter is going to take a little bit, especially when you're adding like more like cold ingredients to that. So you're just going to probably need, you know, get a fork or get your whisk, but you're just going to have to take a little bit of time with it. I haven't added all the ingredients yet, but I thought I'd break, start breaking down the, the almond butter. And this makes up enough to where, you know, you're going to use the drizzle for your tofu Buddha bowl, but at the same time that you're going to be able to come back and, you know, you can say, okay, I am, I don't want a bowl. I want, I've got some great wraps in the, the fridge, like maybe brown rice or, or, um, whole, you know, whole grain, whatever you like that's out there and like sprouted wheat type of things. And you could say, I want to wrap today. So you could use all the same ingredients that you're doing here and then use this as the sauce on the inside. So you could put a little bit of hummus. You could put the drizzle of the sauce and it just gives you a whole nother way to, to eat. I always talk about cook once, eat many times. And these are, especially in the summer, these are some of my favorite things to do is just the bootables, just because you have such great ingredients. And, and it's one of those things too, that, uh, before and nobody saw it on camera and stuff, um, Jerry was, I have red cabbage sitting here and he tends to, I have to always make extra because he tends to take handfuls of it just to eat. It's always good. So he said, it's breaking down. So it's starting to get a little bit thicker. But if you wanted to, you know, like just say you've got your, um, your almond butter is not real smooth. This one tends to be, it's not chunky, but it's kind of that somewhere in between. So it's a little grainy, um, but you could actually just put it into the blender to make it really smooth if you wanted to, too. But if you don't want to do anything to your blender, don't want to dirty it, this is the way to do it. Little hand, little hand whisking. Oh, cat. I can't, I don't, don't see it, but cute. Okay. I'll probably get a couple more stirs. Okay. Then the other ingredients we've got in there, because we've got, we've got the, the almond butter, we've got the water, we've got the low sodium soy sauce. We have sriracha. Same thing. As I said, on the heat, the sriracha we're doing, we're actually doing, um, a tablespoon. So it's going to have some kick to it. If you don't like a lot of kick, go down to an eighth start with that. You can always add, I always talk about that with spices and everything. You can always add 
can't take away once you make it. So even if, so if I like spicy and you don't leave it out or just add a little bit. You could also add um, sambal alik, which is another thing. So it's like a, a sweet chili paste, which would be good in here too. So that'll give you a completely different flavor. So if you get tired of, of this sauce, you could add a, a couple of different flavors to it and have that ready. And then we're going to add, so I've got, let's see, make sure peanut sauce. Okay. we got the rice vinegar. Let me just look real quick. So rice vinegar, use a lot of that now. And then I'm going to add, so brand of hot sauce. So we, so Jerry's Tabasco, he has raised pure Tabasco, loves it. Um, chula I like, I think is really good. I like Sriracha. I like a little bit of Sriracha. I don't like a lot of Sriracha. Like I don't, I don't bury it like things in Sriracha. And then I would say other hot sauces. We have one. We'll see what it is. This one is the Boulder hot sauce company, Smoky Serrano. And that's a really good one. Yeah. The sriracha, let me grab it. I, it's in the fridge. So they all, they to me, they all taste the same. And some people may say, you know, purists may say, eh, that's not. This is actually Kroger brand. So it's just like a King Supers Kroger. And so it was just the regular, that's what they had in the stores that I could find. And so that's the one I got. But like I said, if you're a purist, you may completely disagree with me, but... That's really good. Do it. Yeah, you can you, know, you can spend a lot of money in sriracha. I mean, you could go and you could go to those like hot sauce shops um, and those type of things, and they'll have some very expensive srirachas. But that one's oops, really good. So then the last thing, of course, a little bit of sesame seeds. Add that in. I'm going to check the tofu. That one has a lot of sriracha on it. Otherwise, I was going to taste it, but then figured that all I would taste was sriracha. That's really good. So it's more, it's not sweet. So if you want, so if you prefer, so we kind of mentioned on the, the recipes, if you want something that's a little bit more sweet, then you can add like some agave, date paste, you know, maple syrup, anything out there, you know, monk fruit, um, those type of things. But this is definitely not one of those, those sweet ones. It's more, I would say it's probably more like on your, kind of like your nut butter type of flavors, but it's really good. And it's actually, you know, it's like, so drizzling and stuff is going to be, going to be really nice. So it'll just go right over the, the tofu, but then it'll soak into the rice, which is really good. So I'll just kind of keep a little bit. That is ready to go. We'll get that ready for. So I just cut, I also cut just for, you know, for flavors because limes on all the vegetables, especially when they're raw is really good. So we'll put some lime in there. We'll be able to squeeze that on top. Let me grab the tofu. Remember all the sauce that was on the side? There's the tofu already. So you're seeing it where it's actually starting to get, you know, all nice and browned kinds of things. So I'm going to just do a quick flip because if I flip it, let me just do this real quick and I'll show you what the, the bottom of it, it's already starting to get nice and crispy brown. So let me just do a quick little flip of everything. Grab a spoon and I'll probably end up using my fingers. This is when you can tell when you've got a chef that that's used to picking up hot stuff. It's when they use their fingers. So it's a little stuck. I just flip it over. But I mean, look, look at that. Here's the, whoops, grab the paper. Here's what we're cooking. Here's what's browned already on the bottom. Yum. Quick flip. And this should only take probably about another five minutes or so. He said that cornstarch, potato starch, tapioca starch accelerates the cooking, which is really nice. 
So I'm going to switch out. I'm going to put the cauliflower on the bottom. All right. So if you were going to put a sauce, so another question for you, if you're going to put a sauce on a Buddha bowl, what would be your favorite sauce? I always like to hear what, what kind of sauces that you'll put over vegetables and, and rice and, and all that. Savory. Yeah. This one's definitely savory. It's, it's, it's not, um, like I said, it's not sweet at all. Yep. Very much nut butter, nut butter, soy sauce type of thing, but good. And a little bit of kick with that sriracha. Sometimes there is times though that a little bit of sweet is good. Like a hoisin sauce or something like that when you do a stir fry. Really good. All right. So let's get things ready because things are going to be coming up here pretty soon. So radishes. Radishes are plenty right now. They're great. Um, so I just did thin little slices. You could use a mandolin if you want. But I didn't want, I didn't last night I didn't feel like getting a mandolin out. So I just did nice little thin slices that we'll put on there. So completely raw. Edamame. Yum, one of my favorites. Red cabbage. And then not really shredded, but more like julienned carrots. Um, so nice little, kind of like nice little slices of carrots. And of course, carrots are plenty right now and you can get lots of them. And then Jerry and I eat a lot of sprouts. So these are, I think these are the broccoli sprouts. So whatever we can find in the stores and stuff. So I'm going to be adding those to the, the top and stuff for just, you know, it's good for your gut, good for your immune system. So I we'll had a little bit as, as far as decoration on top of the cauliflower, but then we'll also add it on the Buddha bowls because it's good for you. We do lots of uh, sushi um, with sprouts and there's a lot of sprouts inside of them and stuff, which is really good. All right. So then we've got avocado. So Avocados are really good right now, which is really nice. And of course, this one's not. So we're going to get another one. That one didn't come out as pretty as most of them do. That is highly unusual. I'd say that's, I mean, you could, you could definitely trim off the edges and stuff, but I would say that's the one out of probably, I don't know, 10 avocados we've done over the past month. That's not looked that good. Okay, so now it's a bigger one. Yeah, so there's a little bit of a trick for telling them right, but I've also tried the trick and it doesn't always work. So usually on the top, so like when you're buying it, it has a little has a little stem part that's there on that. So a lot of times they'll say, if you, if you kind of pluck off the end of it and it's, it's still, that one's look a little bit more dry and it still has a little bit of green on there, then that's usually a good sign. So still not hundred percent perfect, but much better than the other one. All right. So let me grab a spoon. So you could do chunks if you want to. So you just kind of, you know, do the hatches on the avocado and then scrape it out. Um, but I'm going to do some slices because the slices of the avocado will be pretty. I also, since I'm not going to use the other half, I do... I always show these because these are like under $10. They're on Amazon. They break them. They're called Avo Savers, so A-V-O Saver. And it's really nice because you see the, the inside of it. So you just match up your avocado there. You do it in a nice little wrap like that. And it keeps the air out of your avocado. So you could actually keep it in your fridge, you know, three or four days. And, and still, you might have a little bit of brownie, but not like if you're putting it in a baggie or something like that. So we do this all the time with the avocado. I've even sometimes like taken parts of the avocado out and then put it back in here and then use the rest for like dinner and stuff. And it just keeps it really fresh. I like that. It's just avo saver. Yep. See, I swear. So I'm going to just peel it down. As I say, the avocados are really good. And then I pull out a couple and... Not so good. Only on a show. All right. 
do a little trimming. So then I'm just gonna do some little thin slices. Fan it out and just put it to the side. That way I can get to the pieces. And I can see if there's any little brown spots or anything else on those. That will go in the fridge. It's funny, like two of them in the same time. Like I said, we have been, we've been eating avocado and, you know, different slices of it and things like that for, you know, we'll do it like on tacos and tostados and stuff. And we've had really, really good luck. So these two, unfortunately. So what? Live TV. Yep. All right. There we go. Put down the... All right. So let's grab a big bowl. All right, so we've got we've got a big bowl, so you could make you know whatever size of bowls that you want, depending on what you do. This is this is Jerry's bowl. <laughs> um, he will eat. I would say he will eat. By the time I make it up, probably ninety nine percent of it, if that. And then he'll put it the other side. And then tomorrow, about ten thirty, quarter eleven, he will be in the refrigerator making his next one. He usually every time we have a class on Thursdays, he always gets up. He always makes sure not gets up, but he gets he gets in the kitchen and makes sure that he has all his stuff set up so that he can have the same leftovers. He's good about that. All right, so I'm gonna grab. Why is my there we go? Okay. I have, I'm gonna bring it over. So I did brown rice. I was like, why is the lid locked? Because it's I checked it earlier. So brown rice, I just did it in the pressure cooker. It's an instant pot, which love them. Um, great company type of thing. They are, so I just put it in and it's a brown. So depending on what brown rice that you have, you know, because each one of the different brands, some of them cook a little bit longer, some of them will cook a little bit less. But this one, because it's a it's kind of like a basmati brown rice, I actually put it on for 21 minutes. So it all, you know, did all of its, you know pressurizing and everything else and then 21 minutes and then I've got this great brown rice and I did a little bit more than normal than what the recipe says and the reason why is Jerry loves his brown rice it's all about Jerry I know um, uh, but he likes his brown rice and then we also give some to the dog and everything else because we we do that and that keeps her stomach feeling good etc so just grab a I'm gonna grab a different spoon Make it a little bit easier to dish up. And let me check the tofu. Yum. It smells so good. Look at that tofu. Kind of nice and brown. And it almost, it's funny because it's, um, and I'm not sure why, but I think it's just the way the it hit on the paper. But it almost looks like grill marks. Like, huh, it's cute. All right, let me put this off to the side. I'll just do it right here. So let's just taste a piece of it. A nice too. So it has a little bit of give, but not not like it was normally the tofu. So it's it's actually nice and chewy. I would say, taste wise, you're gonna you taste a little bit more of the the um, soy sauce very little of the sriracha but it has just a teeny little bit like back of your tongue i'll show you this real quick nice fluffy brown rice from the instant pot best way to cook rice unless you have a rice cooker then i know a lot of people like the rice cooker so you could make this as pretty so you could actually do like little you know little round bowls of rice make little mounds, but I'm just gonna do it more free form today. I've done the, the mounds. <laughs> there you go. 
Yeah, somebody make rigid part, yeah, parchment paper for grill marks. Yep, you could actually, you know, you could use like the silpat that has kind of the, the marks on it too. So you could do that. But this just because of the way that the paper soaked up made it look like grill marks. It's like, this is beautiful. It's like, I'll take it. Yucky avocado, great grill marks on the tofu. All right. So just the brown rice in the middle. You could do this on a plate. You don't have to do, even though it says boo bowl, you could do a Buddha plate. You could do, you know, whatever, whatever you'd like to do. And then you're going to grab all the ingredients. So tofu is going to go in the middle. Some of the tofu stuck together, but that's okay. You just pull it apart. Put as much or as little as you want. And I'm going to flip it a little bit so that the black sesame seeds show. The guy saw me separate the tofu, but even then, even if it's touching, it's still. All right, so that goes in the middle. You could also put it on the side. And Buddha bowls are all about how you like put them together. But if you're at home by yourself, who cares? It's like put everything together and mix because you're going to mix it all up anyway. But if you're doing something like a party or something like that, so this would be a fun party. You could actually just have all this like vegetable bar of everything all sliced up, have your tofu or some kind of other, you know, if you wanted to do, you know, tempeh, seitan, whatever those kind of things there in the middle. And then, then you could actually, or like, even you could do like eggplant, you know, that type of thing. And then have everybody make their own with all the sauces, which would be really fun. All right. So we're going to do red cabbage. Jerry's like, pile on the red cabbage. Then think about colors. So you've got carrots. This is where you could add, you know, if you had some um, zucchini, all those colors. We have edamame. Then grab your radishes. Don't like radishes. There's so many other things that you know could add the the roasted red peppers, all kinds of things like that with it. Just kind of stack them up. I'll show you here in just a second. I used to not be a radish fan, but. You know, it's like sometimes when you you get a little older, <laughs> then all of a sudden you start liking things that you never liked as a kid. So that's one of the things I like now. So not done yet, but there you go. So like put the radishes so that you could actually, if you're really good at it and want to make it almost like a little rose, you could do a little, like a little rose right around your tofu, which would make it really pretty. But already just look at those colors. So pretty. Then we have avocado but I want to grab the cauliflower. Phew, hot, nice roasted cauliflower. So I'm gonna grab some cauliflower in there. Grab some pieces that are, you know, more bite size because the other side, the other parts will be for the, for just to enjoy. Yum, meeny, meeny, miny, mo. And one more. Okay, so add just a couple more pieces of tofu to fill in the gaps. Avocado. Okay. 
You're like, boy, she sure likes to play with food. <laughs> Sprouts. Actually, I'll pull these off for a second. I'm going to drizzle first because otherwise they get caught up in the drizzle. Grab a spoon. All right, sprouts. Need a little bit of red. All right. And then we'll grab, let me grab, let me do this real quick. I'm going to grab the cauliflower. Here's why you do parchment paper. Piece don't need in that. Flip it around. Nice thing, my baking sheet's all nice and clean. No issues with that. White sesame seeds, black sesame seeds. It's more about, they're really good flavor, but it's also more about, as I call it, pretty eye candy. Okay, sprouts. All right, so. There is the yummy tofu buddha bowl. Doesn't that look beautiful? All those fresh ingredients. You've got some cooked, so you've got warm. You've got the warm rice. You've got some of the cold vegetables or room temperature because they've been sitting out just a little bit. But isn't that pretty? That's like put a, put a spoon in it and away you go. And then we have the miso roasted cauliflower. So... Even though we've got it here in the bowl, we put it in the bowl. So cook once, use twice. We've got two beautiful things that we're going to be able to enjoy for dinner. So I hope you guys enjoyed. So we've got another class coming up here at the end of the month. So in the meantime, like I said, if you if you do make recipes or come up with you know different things that you put together or you invent the silpat that has the grill marks, which I love. Um, just send us pictures. I really appreciate it. But let me know what how you guys try things and, and if you made something a little bit different. But I hope you guys enjoyed and we'll talk to you here in about two weeks. And I'll let you know about Rancho. All right. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.